Now you talk about terror. I've been terrorized all my day. Hammer all my day. Hi, I'm Chris Edges. Welcome to Days of Revolt. Today we're going to discuss veganism, uh, why people become vegans, uh, whether it can be described as a moral choice, what the impact uh, of the animal agriculture industry is on the ecosystem and how veganism may be an appropriate alternative, as well as raise some of the issues critics of veganism use to counter this stance. And joining me in the studio is author and philosopher and vegan activist Gary Francione. Gary, thank you for coming. Terrific to be back. All right. Let's start with the idea that somehow the choice of being vegan is more moral when we have a figure like John Mackey, who runs Whole Foods, uh, who is a professed vegan, uh, and yet is anti-union, has just been uh, found to uh, have inflated prices uh, throughout his stores, uh, i.e. selling uh, uh, products that have a certain weight uh, and not being honest about that weight, uh, who is a, a right-wing uh, figure. Um, and how do you answer that? How do you how do you respond to that? And well, I think you're no fan of John Mackey. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I think John Mackey, in conjunction with groups like PETA and Farm Sanctuary that promote this whole happy exploitation business, are are really reactionary and terribly problematic. But I mean, look, the fact that John Mackey explain happy exploitation. What well, do you mean by that? happy exploitation is this idea that we can exploit compassionately. That you know that that if we have you know John Mackey and and Whole Foods has this animal welfare rating system where you have right. you. You, you have five steps and you can choose your level of torture that you want to inflict on right, animals right. and you can buy animals that are supposedly tortured less. Um, but that whole idea, which reinforces the idea in people's minds that we can exploit compassionately, that there's right. a right way to do the wrong thing, I think is really problematic. I mean, I think we ought to be focusing on use and right. on the justification. But, but he is a vegan. Right, uh, but I mean, there are lots of really bad people who, I mean, not everyone is 100% bad. So John Mackey's got lots and lots of really terrible attributes, but he happens to be a vegan, so what? I mean, you know, you can look at, you know, you can look at any, any characteristic and say that characteristic is instantiated by some people who are really morally odious people. Right, well, so, Martin Luther King ate meat, so. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I think probably we could say that, um, being a vegan is a moral choice, but it doesn't make you moral. No, exactly right, exactly right. And as I, I often say, uh, veganism is part of a commitment to nonviolence, but it's not the only thing you need to do right. to be committed to nonviolence. Also, you know, Mackey, Mackey projects this idea, which really troubles me, that veganism is an elitist thing, that, you know, in order, in order to be well, a vegan... that's a good question, because, I mean, let, let's be, you know, honest about it. It does tend to resonate with white middle class, upper middle class people, I mean, in terms of embracing the vegan movement. Well, look, veganism, if you want to buy processed foods, uh, you know, that, that, that imitate meat and dairy and those things, you can spend a fortune. I mean, I don't eat that it's stuff. Expensive. It's expensive. Don't, I don't eat that stuff. I mean, first of all, it's got tons of salt and it's nutritionally, like it has no nutrition to it. But I mean, basically a diet of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, uh, and, and seeds is invariably cheaper than a diet that has animal products. Well, and, but let's go into a food desert like Camden, where I worked when I wrote Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. People lived on a diet of processed food, fried chicken, because if they, there wasn't, by the way, a supermarket in Camden, you go to the outskirts of Camden, that was true in southern West Virginia, where we also, Joe Sacco and I, were. Uh, but if you wanted to buy tomatoes, you wanted, they couldn't afford them. Well, but look, I, I teach at Rutgers University in Newark, and oddly enough, they are building a Whole Foods right near the Rutgers campus in Newark. But um, that's not a problem of veganism. That's a problem of, of, of racism. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a problem of the fact that we're happy to have people living in areas where they can get fried food, fast food, right. liquor, 
uh, cigarettes, but they can't get fresh food. I mean, you know, that, that really has nothing to do with the ethics of veganism. That has to do with the, 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 with racism. It has to do with racism and classism. But I mean, you know, there's, in many ways, there is nothing more elitist than the standard Western diet, you know, where we're consuming all of the, this meat and, and dairy and eggs and whatnot that require a huge amount of resources to be put into them. To, I mean, it takes between six and 12 pounds of plant protein to, to produce one pound of flesh. I mean, if we are all consuming the plants directly rather than feeding them to animals that we're going to eat, we could feed the world. I mean, so I think that this idea that, that being a vegan is, is an elitist thing, I think is not only but not in, true, in but the contrary is true. But, you know, let's look at Farm Sanctuary, which I visited up in Watkins yes. Glen, which I think you call a petting zoo. I think you might even call it a petting zoo for rich people. I mean, right. that is a definitely a white, you know, sure. upper class elitist hobby. Of course, but so what? I mean, you know, again, um, the fact that, that certain people are attracted to the idea doesn't mean that that, that the merits of the idea uh, is in any way de are in any way determined by the fact that some people like that are attracted to it. Um, by the way, I, I would say that you know I've been teaching in Newark for 25, 26 years now, and I regularly teach a course in, in animal rights. Actually, I teach a course with Anna Charlton on human rights and animal rights. We talk about racism, sexism, heterosexism, and speciesism, and we always have a large number of students of color in that class. And they're very, very turned on by this idea. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, just not a, it's not something which only appeals to white middle class people. Um, it appeals to lots and lots of people. And the fact that there are some uh, upper middle class people attracted to it, or the fact that processed vegan foods cost a lot of money, or that you buy them in places like Whole Foods, which I agree is just a disgusting place, right. um, doesn't determine the merits of the idea. How do you look at indigenous cultures, which I think you would agree these pre-modern, quote unquote, pre-modern cultures have retained a sense of the sacred uh, that modern society has lost, and yet they're not vegan cultures. Right. Um, well, look, uh, you know, I remember once many years ago, many years ago when I was first doing this, I was giving a talk in Canada, and um, a young man who was an, a member of the Inuits came, uh, asked me a question in front of hundreds of people, which was the first time I was ever Well, asked. we should also say that the Inuit survive. I mean, their whole right. culture yeah. is built around and the killing, primarily of seals. Right? Well, uh, seals, were, you know, yes, yes, seals. Uh, but they, they do get a lot of stuff blown in these days. And so, but in any event, he asked me, he said, well, how can you uh, make a judgment about what my people are doing? And I said, well, let me ask you a question. If your, if your people were engaged in violence towards children as a cultural matter, would it be all right for me to criticize it? He said, yes, it would be. And I said, well, then we, we agree that there's no problem with, 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 critic with outsiders criticizing. It's just a question we disagree on what triggers the, 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 the right to do that. But look, um, I don't spend a whole lot of time. Uh, but, but, but Gary, can you really equate children with seals? For what purpose? I mean, I believe all sentient beings. I mean, that's like asking me, would I equate the fact, you know, would I equate Jews with Romanies? I mean, do I think it's worse that Hitler killed Romanies rather right, than we are answers? talking about? But but do I mean, uh, and I, you address that at the beginning of uh, of this book, uh, eat like you care. Um, if there comes a moment, and I mean, let's take the Warsaw Ghetto, where one has to choose between an animal or a child. If I were on a desert island with you, and I, I love your work, if I were on a desert island with you and we were starving and there were no vegetables um, and, and there was a rabbit, would I kill and eat the rabbit? Of course I would, but I would kill and eat you if I had to, to survive. Right, but which would you kill first? Um, well... Careful, this I, is my show. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. Um, I um, I might choose to kill the. It, I mean, if I'm passing by the burning house and there's a human and a non-human in there, um, tell me who the human is. If the human's Hitler, and the and you know, I'll, I'll go for I'll go for saving the animal first. But look, I think that there are situations in which we are compelled to make choices. I, I, choices between humans, between you know between two humans, or choices between a human and a non-human. 
And sometimes we're going to have to make choices in situations where nothing we, we do can be morally satisfactory. And, and so the choice that we make it may be excusable, but it doesn't mean it's justifiable. We have a moral obligation not to use any sentient being as a resource. Now, if you're in a situation, I mean, people always ask me, so what are you going to do on a desert island? And I say, well, are you on a desert island right now? I mean, you're, Right, but we can take things like the Warsaw Ghetto because that, that, yeah, that's real. That's not a desert island uh, where you know, people had to eat animals in order to survive. Well, that's right. I mean, I, and then the choice was between eating animals or eating other human beings. And sometimes people do eat other human beings in situations of extremism. But is it an immoral equivalent? It is immoral to ever to kill. It is immoral to kill in human or non-human. So to say, is it worse? I don't think it's a question of worse. It's, it's, it's equally bad. Um, I understand the choice that is made to favor the human over the non-human, but I don't think that, the, for me, that's not a statement that the human matters more morally. I mean, any more than white people matter more Right, morally. but you would choose the human over the non-human? I would choose the human over the non-human most likely. Again, it would depend. I mean, if the human was Hitler well, and let's, the... Well, let's hope we know. I don't want to uh, eat Hitler. Okay, but I mean, kind of I, would choose the, I would choose the human over the non-human. Um, because I understand what death is to the human, so right. I understand it. I understand what that harm is, but that doesn't mean that I think that the human has any more moral value than the non-human. For purposes of treating a sentient being as a resource, all sentient beings are equal. Any and, and, and Chris, in many ways, that question is like saying, well, what if you've got two humans? And one's really smart and one's not. One's, one's mentally disabled. Which one do you choose? Because, you know, that's a question that comes up Eat a lot. the smart one because they, they're the ones who got us into this mess. Right. So, well, exa <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly that sort, of, uh, right. that sort of analysis. I mean, for purposes of, of being exploited, if you say, well, you know, is the human, does the, human does the intelligent human matter more than the non-intelligent human? Um, and, and, you know, are we going to treat them the same? No, we don't treat right. them the same. Well, let's talk about the animal kingdom because, I mean, they're clearly carnivores within the animal kingdom. I think there's a pretty strong argument that our ancestors uh, who uh, could perspire and therefore run longer distances uh, gained massive amounts of protein by being able to capture, hunt down, exhaust other animals and then roast them and eat them. I think Born to Run kind of makes this argument. Uh, but certainly within the animal kingdom uh, and even within the you know, antecedents of human civilization, uh, carnivores were part of the natural order. Well, look, animals do eat other animals. Lots of animals don't eat other animals. I mean, there are a lot of vegan animals out there. Um, but the, the, the fact remains that I don't really know whether animals make moral decisions. I know I make moral decisions. You make moral decisions. So, I mean, the fact that some animals choose to, you know, I mean, I don't think that when a, a lion is contemplating what to eat, the lion is saying, well, you know, I could have a salad or I could take that down that gazelle. I mean, the lion is, is I, I don't believe that the lion engages that in that sort of cognition. Um, the, but the, the, the fact remains, I can engage in that. You can engage in that. So the fact that, that some animals make choices that I think are immoral doesn't mean that those choices are moral for us to make. Okay, right. so it's like saying, it's like saying, well, Charles Manson's a sociopath. He can't make moral decisions. So what? I right. can, you can. To what extent do you think that, you know, the focus on animal suffering distracts, and I think it does distract, a certain segment of the vegan population from human suffering? And, and let's be clear that even if you're a vegan, there is still horrific exploitation of human beings producing in our produce fields, uh, including exposure to pesticides and everything else, uh, there, there is a lot of human suffering that goes into the producing of If we were all vegans, we'd have fewer acres under cultivation, so there would be fewer people working. I mean, if we were, if we were consuming the plants directly, we would be actually produce it, we'd have fewer acres under cultivation, we'd be producing fewer plants if everybody were vegan. So, I mean, now, there's a lot of human suffering. A lot of that human suffering is caused by um, animal exploitation or is related to animal exploitation. I mean, again, if we were all vegans, we could feed the world. I mean, we're, the amount of, 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 of grain fed to animals in this country who are going to be consumed could feed 780 million well, people. And I think we should throw in here that also the animal agriculture industry is 
one of the major contributors, if not the major contributor to global warming. Absolutely. And, and look, I mean, I, I also think, I, I never ever try to discourage people who are doing work for, you know, for human causes to say, well, you ought to be working for animals. My view is, look, you know, I mean, I wouldn't say to you, Chris Hedges, you know, I want you to stop thinking about all the wonderful things that you think about and doing all the wonderful work that you do and turn exclusively to animals. The answer is, I don't want you to do that. But when you're eating, you know, you, gotta, you have to stop and eat three times a day. So when you eat, go just be vegan, you know, be consistent. You talk about nonviolence. Let the words of nonviolence come out of your mouth, but don't let violence go into well, your I mouth. think you, you, you tie the nonviolence towards animals to the, which is one of the reasons I like your work, directly to the suffering of Palestinians. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, this is all, really, all discrimination. I mean, speciesism is like racism, like sexism, like homophobia. I mean, it's like, it, they're, all, they're all the same. They all share the same characteristic of, of using an irrelevant criterion to exclude people from membership, to exclude beings from membership in the moral community. And so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, the, the, the pattern is reproduced in every single instance of it's discrimination. It's the objectification. It's the objectification, the, other, the otherization, you know, the otherization. And in many ways, the model for otherizing humans, other humans, is animals. You know, I mean, think about the language. We always say, you know, we treat them like animals. Well, we treat them like animals because we believe it's justifiable because we treat animals like animals. What possible justification, if you have no compulsion, if you're not on the desert island, you're not on the ship in the middle of the ocean, if you have a choice between eating a healthy meal and not killing or, you know, eating an animal product, whether it's, whether it's meat, dairy, eggs, whatever, what possible justification can there be for inflicting suffering and death on a sentient being, and then the only thing you can get in that is, well, what about plants? Aren't they sentient? Which is, you know, then you, right. then, then you know you you basically won the argument, or you get the, the you know you get the response, well, Hitler was a vegetarian, which is actually false. But I mean, that those are sorts of desperate well, responses. Do, you get. Is there a danger that that position, your position, dehumanizes human beings? In what way? Um, by essentially equating them with animals. No, I'm saying all sentient beings have moral value. Okay, all sentient beings, including animals who are the most vulnerable, but not us. So once we accept that they have moral value, and once we accept that we cannot justify inflicting violence and suffering and death on them, it makes it almost impossible. I mean, it makes it almost impossible to support violence toward other humans. And that's not true with every vegan. No, but by no means. And I mean, John Mackey's a good example. John Mackey's a good example. You know, PETA gives awards to all sorts of reactionary people. Uh, there are all PETA, sorts of- PETA, explain to PETA. Uh, pe people for the ethical treatment of animals. Um, you know, they, they, were, uh, they were promoting at one point Hugh Hefner, they were, promo you know, they were promoting, um, you know, they, they gave an award, as I recall, to Pat Buchanan, uh, people like that. Right, but they don't promote veganism. Um, well, no, uh, well, they, all pro of, they, they promote the, the what you call the happy exploitation. Well, all of, of them, all of them say that they think veganism is a really good thing. But mm -hmm. they, but, but for me, it's a moral baseline, a moral imperative. For them, it's an option along with other options that supposedly reduce suffering. For me, it's it's a moral baseline. So, so you're correct. None of the, the organizations, right. PETA, Farm Sanctuary, well, none of them. Well, let's just throw in the thing that people throw out. Well, I have to eat meat for protein. I have to get iodine. There's no nutritional element that you can't get from a vegan diet. You can't get B12. I mean, we, we produce some B12, but we don't rely, re produce. Well, and enough. we should throw in here that we used to get B12 from eating plants. Right. Because uh, we, they weren't as sanitized, they weren't as clean. Right. And we would get B12 because it's in dirt. Right. And now, well, the B12's also been depleted from the dirt. I mean, the dirt, right, right. the soil's been so depleted of, of things. But, um, but the reality is, you know, all of us have to get our B12 from an outside source. Mm -hmm. So whether you get it from yeast or right. whether you get it from a cow, um, you know, all of us, it's not that, it's not that, you know, there's something unnatural about the way I get my B12. It's we all have to get it, you know, in, in an exogenous way. So, you, you know, people who eat meat get it from eating meat. I get it from eating yeast um, and, and things of that nature. So, so there's nothing, whether it's calcium, iodine, protein. What's interesting to me is that um, government, basically government agencies, which are notoriously sources of disinformation, even they agree 
that a vegan diet can satisfy all of your nutritional needs, whether it's in you know, the United States, Britain, Australia, other places. Government agencies, professional groups, all of them are saying that vegan, a vegan diet can provide all of the nutrients that you need. And they even, some of them grudgingly say, you know, and, and a vegan diet may even be more uh, healthy for you. Well, than, and also we should raise the point that uh, heart disease, Cancer. Sure, absolutely. I mean, absolutely, you know. And so, now, again, there are people who will dispute that and say that, well, you know, I don't like that study or I don't like this study. Right. But the bottom line is nobody can argue that it's as healthy. I would argue it's more healthy, but nobody can argue that it's not as healthy. Um, in terms of priorities, uh, you know, some critics would say, look, you know, okay, all of that may be true, all of that's good, but given the egregious human rights violations that are happening around the world, whether in Iraq, whether in Palestine, uh, you know, or anywhere else, shouldn't our, our energies be directed at that first? Go for it. I, look, if, you know, help the Palestinians, help battered women, help abused children. But when you eat and you buy clothes, don't exploit animals. That's all. I'm not, I am in no way saying that people who are involved in human rights issues shouldn't be. I encourage them. I think that, because I see these things as all related. Um, so my view is, hey, you know, go for it. So I'm not saying that you should, you know, I, I don't like to sort of rank things in terms of like, well, you know, is, is this group of people treated worse than that, that group? I mean, it, there's so much injustice. Whatever, whatever excites you, or whatever, whatever area of injustice uh, motivates you to want to work to end, go, go for it. But, wh but when you eat, you got to eat. So when right. you eat, eat vegan. When you buy your clothes, don't buy leather, don't buy wool, don't buy silk, you know, and, 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 and but keep on fighting the fight. I'm all in favor of that. Never I'm, have said to the I mean, I, and I think for you, there's a connection between the fight and the lifestyle, the vegan lifestyle that you embrace. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely, as I said before. And I know you're very outspoken on these issues, by the way. It's, these aren't something that you avoid. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. And I get a lot of grief from people in the, quote, animal movement, which I actually don't have much respect for, because I will take positions. I take a lot of positions. I mean, you know, I, I, I think some of the campaigns that PETA has are, are they're not only sexist, they're, they're, they're misogynistic. And I think they're really Well, you're talking horrible. about people, the, the women sort of... Uh... Well, the, you know, the, 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 the um, well, I mean, they have, all, they have a whole range of sexist campaigns where they're adver you know, they're claiming, well, if you're vegan, you'll be better in the bedroom, and you're, you know, oh, if you're vegan, you know, and w women, you know, who are, who are uh, uh, masturbating with vegetables and things like that. I mean, I think these are really, really right, right. Uh, uh, objectionable. But, I mean, I have gotten a lot of grief in the 30-some-odd years I've been doing this because I've taken a position on sexism, I've taken a position on racism, I've taken a position on the Palestinians, I, and, you know, know. And, and people get upset, and they say, well, no, you know, we ought to be focus on the animal issue. And I say, for me, it's all one issue. Right. It's a fundamental issue of justice. It's, it's, a, it's just a question of, you've got a whole bunch of victims out there. And, and animals are certainly as vulnerable as just about anybody else. Um, and so, you know, let's, let's, focus on, let's focus on justice. And justice leads us to a number of conclusions, one of which is we shouldn't be exploiting animals, but it leads us to many other conclusions. We shouldn't be exploiting women. We shouldn't be exploiting children. We shouldn't be exploiting, you know, we should care about the fact that, you know, there's a Palestinian genocide going right. on. Right. Um, what would you say to people who are not vegans, if you had to kind of sum up, what would be your uh, kind of pithy appeal? My pithy appeal? Uh, it depends. I mean, oftentimes I, I can find a way into this issue because someone will make a statement about, uh, oh, isn't it terrible they killed Cecil the Lion? Remember Cecil the right. Lion? And this was, this had, they had stormed the world, you know, right. where people, and I had people coming, you know, saying to me, oh, well, isn't it terrible they killed Cecil the Lion? And I, I, I responded by saying, well, they shouldn't have killed Cecil the Lion, but are you a vegan? And they say, no. I said, well, what's the difference between Cecil the Lion and, and the animal that you're eating tonight? I mean, the fact that that animal doesn't have a name, Let's let's arbitrarily call it the animal Cecil. So don't right. eat eat the animal. Right. So yeah, I mean, it it um, you know, but, but that's the way I generally get into it with people. But I always say to them, you know, look, do you think animals matter morally? And I I very rarely encounter people who say no. I mean, right. almost everybody agrees animals matter morally. And I say, well, then fine. Then then whatever else is the case, we can't justify imposing suffering and death on them for reasons of pleasure, amusement, right. or convenience, which is the only. I mean, you know, we're not on the desert island. We're right. not. On the on the right. lifeboat, the best justification we have is the fact that they taste good. Right. You see, and and I and but but again, I want you know 
one of the things I worry a lot about is the fact that I teach in a city that you know, which which will have a Whole Foods soon, which I don't know who who they expect is going to be able to afford to shop there, but um, but you know, I I teach in an area um, where people where which is a food de where, where there's a food desert, right. but that's not an issue. That's not a problem with veganism. That's a right. problem with we're not providing enough healthy food to these people. There aren't enough healthy right. food choices. So you know, we we need to be working on those sorts of issues, and they are all related: racism, right. sexism, heterosexism, Good. speciesism. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much, Chris. And thank you for watching Days of Revolt. Had to eat out the watermelon patch. And you know they put me in a shack. <laughs>